Overlord is licensed and produced by Kodakawa Shoten, Groove and Funimation. Studios, Madhouse, Networks, ATX, Tokyo MX, Sun, KBS, TVA, BS11 and MBS. Based on the works by Kugan and Maruyama. Please support the official release. Hello there, YouTube Jack here with more Overlord Season 3 Episode uh, 10. And last time was, well, not quite as awesome as the time before that, but still pretty freaking neat with the Emperor, who has a name that I will not yet attempt to pronounce, because A, I don't remember it, and B, well, I literally can't pronounce it even if I did remember it. But, yeah, he went to visit Ainz, and the the old dude, the, 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 the head sorcerer, or whatever his title actually is, of the Bahadur Empire, just immediately betrayed them once he realized that Ainz is like freaking 10th tier god magic in his eyes, and down to his knees, kiss his feet, and just worship him like the freaking god he is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's a lot, of a lot of stuff happened, and like someone even posted a lot of stuff that was omitted from the novels again. You know, I don't mind people telling me the kind of stuff that was omitted, but as I've learned from reading the novels myself, it does happen that they just sometimes shift things around. Like, uh... In volume 2 of the novels, we had the scene with the penguin and uh, Demiurg, like that conversation they had, but they shifted that to volume 2 somewhere. I don't even know what reason they had for introducing him, but it actually happened way earlier. So, that's... Things like that, you know? I mean, it doesn't mean that any of this stuff that was omitted is gonna come up again, I'm just... In it has a potential to happen. It is very unlikely to happen, and it doesn't happen often, but it can happen. But yeah, a lot of stuff was sort of omitted, like uh, smaller details, longer scenes, like apparently uh, the Emperor even had a bit of a talk with Madi and Ada back in the castle when they first invaded. Yeah, stuff like that, you know, you have to cut corners. I've said this many times before, so episode. The quote-unquote alliance between the, what even are they gonna call Nazarik Empire, Nazarik Kingdom? No. With the kingdom, with the empire, with, what are they gonna call themselves? I don't even know yet. Maybe it has been mentioned, I just didn't pick up on it. But yeah, between the Bahadur Empire and the uh, Nazarik, which the emperor is totally gonna go back on and probably try to forge some alliance between the temporary truce between the Empire and the Kingdom, just to take out Ainz, which is going to horribly backfire, presumably. I, I I don't see them working together, especially since Demiurg has completely seen through it, uh, having any sort of positive outcome for them, so to say. I don't know if the Slain Theocracy or the, the Dragon Place, has been mentioned a couple of times, is going to be part of any of this, maybe? Like in Volume 2, see... Season 2, Episode 1, I get my terminology all mixed up now, uh, we we threw out a bunch of characters, you know, we had that old lady, the dragon, and that weird black and white chick with the Rubik's Cube from the Black Scriptures or from the Slain Theocracy. So there are, like, powerful people still out there that we haven't really seen yet, I mean, kind of been shown to us, but haven't seen them in any form of action yet, so there's the Black Scripture and that dragon place, basically. We also have the, the those four, what were the royal knights or something. They haven't done anything yet, but at the end of the day, they are human, so they don't stand a chance. Okay, enough talk, let's get into this episode. In three, two, one, go. Rias Dance Kingdom. They just said what it was, but because I started the video, like the video title wasn't the way. <laughs> To its original owner. <laughs> That's bold. Like, he just showed up out of nowhere and says, Oh, yeah, this place, mine. Better hand it over. Like, we know Ainz can totally just take it by force, no problem, but... Uh, 
to them who don't know Ayn Tulgon, other than the fact that he just aligns himself with the Empire, which probably means a lot to them because realizing this is the freaking bloody Emperor and he just, out of nowhere, forced an alliance with this dude, so probably more to him. But regardless of that, some no name just showing up out of nowhere and saying, ah, uh, yeah, this territory, mine. Ah. Uh, probably not gonna go over that well. And even if the, the, the king, yeah, the king, and the second prince and Rena are smart enough to realize something's up, I'm gonna take a bad here gamble that the nobles, and perhaps the first prince too, since he seems to be a bit on the noble side, are not gonna be quite that sympathetic towards the whole idea of giving up whatever land he is even saying that he owns. I love how there are pretty much like already so many covers and dubs of this opening. Preparation for war. Noble faction, of course. Yeah, at least you know. The one we already saw. I think that was the one who was working with the second prince, right? Oh yeah, he knows him. I completely forgot about that for a while there. <laughs> oh. I'm not gonna remember all these names, you know? Yeah, they're like pretty much on board with all this. Yeah, he knows that Ains can just kill him, kill all of them. <laughs> oh, I, I love it, honestly. Yeah, you know, this is, again, pretty much unheard of. You Just never mind the political implications of just giving up land because someone asks for it. I love the polite smile Rena has on there. <laughs> Uh, potentially, but if it comes to fighting, who do you think is going to go out there? You? Yeah, pretty much that. No matter how random that may be, in these circumstances, that's just impossible. Mm hmm. Okay. I again, I did not pay attention who was in the noble fraction, who was in the royal fraction. There, I'm sorry. I guess they were in the royal fraction. If they're supporting him, probably.
Oh yeah, those were those times. <laughs> not to mention that war is not one of those things that you just boom do. He has a very bright beard. <laughs> Indeed. Why is he going? Oh, well, there's his reasons for not going. <laughs> for not wanting him to go. Okay, and, well, just like that, you got some generous boost out of it. That voice was amazing. <laughs> okay, Elnix, I think I can just call him that, no? Yeah, but again... Huh. So... Somebody listening in on him? Oops. <laughs> Ooh. What a beautiful family. And he's even a kind father. And potentially husband, I'm not sure to tell yet. I'm positive nothing bad is going to happen to them. Right? <laughs> the way he's talking to his son is just adorable. Again, nothing bad is going to happen to them. <laughs> That's adorable. It really is. So, was it the son that uh, they were talking about uh, getting married to Rena? You know, that fake marriage or cover marriage or whatever you want to call it. I'm so glad nothing bad is going to happen to them. <laughs> oh wow, that, that just happened. I mean, I guess no point on dialing there. Okay, whatever cats have to do with it. <laughs> I'm joking. Okay, that's quite high level. You know, to be fair, it's natural for them to assume as much. Again, humans are quite limited in uh, magical capabilities. Oh wow, he opted by a thousand, didn't he? Mm -hmm. I, I don't get what he's playing at here. Okay, yeah. To 
does he perhaps want the prince to get killed or something? Like, that guy's a noble fraction, no? Did I get that wrong? But then again, the prince is kind of good with the nobles, no? What are they playing at? Oh, well. There's one agenda, but... Oh, well, in your face, dude. I mean, that's probably a harsh thing to say, given the state of his face, but... Oh, well. I'm just waiting for all of them to get slaughtered. <laughs> so you decide to send them to a safe place, except that uh, Kona Village already kinda is under Ein's rule and Lupus Regina might be there, who can probably single-handedly kill everyone you send. So that's it, huh? Chance for what? Uniting them in a way? You have very noble goals, good sir. Too bad they're gonna backfire so horribly. Yeah. Quite a nice middle way you found yourself there. We're even playing this nice comment music and wow, he's bowing to him like that's <laughs> it's a valiant. <laughs> I mean, he is quite admirable, uh, from a common background to rise to this position and all that. And training, a poor fool who have been recruited for this futile war. <laughs> yeah, he knows, but again, this is not the kind of thing you can convince someone of. Just by telling them, oh no, he's a frightening powerful magic caster. <laughs> I'm wondering who this adventurer is going to be, though.
Perhaps someone we've seen before. And yeah, you didn't notice him. <laughs> hmm, hmm, hmm. Well, yeah, I guess there's going to be a lot of backstabbing and assassination and, you know, all that. Oh, they have such a nice bromance going. <laughs> I didn't get that guys around too. Oh yeah, on that matter, didn't he like... Uh, yeah, that. That weird name he gave her. <laughs> How did anybody remember that? <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know, that's gonna happen when you build lies upon lies upon lies, eventually they're gonna come down or just conveniently fall together like this. Yeah, that could be curious too. Well, you can see them from here. That's nice. That's just... Sounds like the perfect place for Ainz to fight. <laughs> I mean, you used to be bandit, mercenary, something like that. Yeah, bromance. Didn't he have like, back when they dealt with Demiurg, you know, the, the whatever demon name he used? Nah, but you know, like whatever thing he put on. <laughs> I really wonder who's going to die. Yeah, you know, for one, he's the master of Shaltir. Not that you know that, but still. And he did defeat her. Do, do you want to raise all the death flags? I mean... That's a no, then. <laughs> Can't believe this episode is almost over. I feel like I called that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
I'll move the mask again. Well, of course. Why do you need all need to have those long names? Uh, he has not seen the power demonstration yet, though, has he? I mean, I guess maybe, you know, what happened at the palace without Aunt Mare. A portion of your army. <laughs> yeah, you know, he can summon, like, I don't know how many per day. <laughs> you know, why am I even? <laughs> why am I even at this point? <laughs> no, it is not. <laughs> but oh well. Also, I got the feeling we really have to cram in a lot of story recently. I think this is this the second time we've skipped the ending. Uh yeah, we will see about that. Nah, he's just, you know, kinda of trying to keep you alive. What is with that voice? <laughs> yeah, so he's still planning to join the battle, huh? I mean, nice idea, but... So... Uh, in a way, not a lot happened action-wise, but... Wow, the plot just moved forward a lot. <laughs> I mean, two months, but... <sighs> so... Okay, there's, there's a lot of stuff happening here. We have the Sorcerer King, Einzul Gurn. That just has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? <laughs> and, you know, a couple of, well, like, I forgot how many, but many, many soldiers from the Empire and one of the, those four, I, I'm gonna call them Royal Knights, I don't know what they're called right now, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, let me check something real quick. Uh, the Empire recognize... The Nazarek organization, okay? I get him from the beginning. Left by the Sorcerer King Einzel Gorn as a country and ally. So it's the Nazarek organization, huh? Okay, I, I can deal with that. Uh, yeah, so again, back to stuff that is happening. Like, lots of soldiers and Eins and his army, which is really just a fraction of his power. I mean, I guess he can't make that many Death Knights uh, at once, or like in a day. I know he can create a couple, but I don't think quite that many. So it's like, what, a week's worth? <laughs> I really don't know. And I'm pretty sure he does not have a shortage of corpses if he wanted to. All that aside, yeah, uh, like pretty much him alone and pff, I don't Two or three floor guardians could probably deal with whatever you're dishing out. Then the fact is also you're like in these Casa planes or whatever, so probably a prime location for Irons to summon some lesser spawns, you know, the weak lower level undead, of which you can summon way more, as far as I know. Like uh, we had we had 
back in season two, that one elder lich who was fighting the lizards. I think kind of like he's somewhere in the middle of the, the the mobs that ions can spawn. We have all these plain, you know, plain skeleton soldiers, something of which I think there are a lot. I, I don't know the exact numbers right now, sorry. Then we have these type of elder liches. There are probably more, and the death knights, which are I think among the higher levels. He can just summon with his plain skills like that, and but they are less, less per day or less per something time frame. And there's also the fact, you know, he has the the staff of Einzul Gorn, where he can summon like even some like level 80 flame monster that he did in season one, which again would probably be enough to wipe everything out given the average level, so to say, of humans and all that. Like I think the lizard, what were they around level 20? When you think about it like that, so. Quite a power gap there. Okay, anyway, that's that's a bit of a massacre that's going to happen there. And then we have we have like first prince going to the village, which technically is also in a way under Ainz's rule already. I mean, you know, like he he kind of got them under his thumb with the whole attack that he orchestrated from the the giant of the east or west. I I forgot which one it was. And that he then saved them from with Lupus Regina. And she might still be there. I mean, she was back at Nazarek when they received the delegation from the Empire, but, you know, she might be back there. Now, and I'm pretty sure she alone is enough to deal with some uh, 5,000 puny human soldiers. Maybe there's even more there. Who knows? But, I mean, they're not there to invade it, they're just kind of there to ask questions. But then again, they're only not there to invade it because they probably don't even know that it's under Ainz's rule yet. If you even want to say that it's under Ainz's rule, it, it, it's complicated. <laughs> Damn those political situations. But still, like, the kingdom is already in a really bad situation. They've lost, like, tons of people. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, tons of people back from the Yelba kind of something Demiurx attack, basically. And now they are once again recruiting uh, just, I guess, normal villagers, preparing them quickly for war because they don't have that many people, <laughs> I guess. Uh, not that many soldiers, aside from what the nobles are providing. But then again, like, these are the 5,000 people that one noble did provide, so... Eh? I, I think it doesn't matter whether they're trained or not. They're, once again, puny humans, and... Measuring by what we've seen from both Antuma and uh, Nabiral, I assume that... I mean, I know Lupus Regina is not on the level of a floor guardian, she's not a level 100 NPC, but still, you know, against humans... We've established in so many fights up till now that humans don't stand a chance. Even if there are 5,000 of them, what, what are they going to do against her? She can fly. <laughs> That's pretty much the end of the game for them. <laughs> so we have three more episodes to go. So if I, if we were to assume we have like the the fight at Color Plains, we have which could spawn one or two episodes, span, not spawn, one or two episodes, and we have the, 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 the Kana village, was it Kana or Kana? It doesn't matter, the freaking village place, which I don't think even gonna span, span one episode. Wow, I can't speak anymore. Yeah, I'm not too sure what exactly is going to happen, how this is going to end, plus we have to deal with the overall aftermath, we're not just gonna cut off at the end of the battle. So, pff, two episodes to sum up the war and the village, and then one episode dealing with whatever, which is basically, I guess, just establishing the Nazi League organization as a nation of its own, with like that little territory that they will take back from from the, the kingdom. 
And then there's also the matter of the whole fact that, you know, the Emperor wants to betray them, backstab them, but that's gonna be a lot tougher now that they've gone to war. Unless he plans to use the war as a front and actually attack him while the whole thing is going on. But the whole, like, the, 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 that war meeting the kingdom just had between the nobles and the king after the two months of preparation didn't really seem like it, but then again, they didn't really talk that much about what they were actually going to do, did they? They might just secretly forge an alliance. That would be an interesting plot twist, to be honest. I mean, not anymore, I just spoiled it, but still. <laughs> anyway, that's gonna be all for now, and until next time, see you then. Bye.